Hi everybody! Yeah, I'm back. Um, Foodies put out a very clickbaity video um, as a nurse. She says obese, but a super morbidly obese person who's bigger than ever. How she travels. Well, she's just basically listed some of the most obvious things to most grown adults that we would realise. Um, do not buy a seatbelt extender. She doesn't tell anyone to do that, but I'm just saying, do not buy a seatbelt extender if you're an obese person. Don't You can't take your own. You have to use one that's been approved by the airline so it meets safety regulations. So don't go in online and try and buy your own because you can't. You're not supposed to. You're supposed to use the ones provided by the airlines. Now, Foodie talks about traveling and stigma and embarrassment and don't be embarrassed while she sits there covered from head to toe. Um, in clothing that, you know, covers her all up. She's telling people not to be embarrassed about their size. Now, as somebody who has travelled as big as big as a house at 322 and, you know, uncomfortable, it was actually one of the motivating factors for me to lose weight is because it was so uncomfortable when I was travelling. But I had a really good trip and I wanted to have more trips that were more enjoyable by losing the weight. So that's why I lost weight. Now, some of the things that Foodie said, just word salad. It's not really worth listening to, really. I mean, go and watch it. If you really enjoy great content, go and watch Foodie Beauty's video about travel tips. Um, I'm going to give you some of my own in relation to Foodie. Foodie does mention that you can just find random spaces like stairs and things because that's not annoying for people walking up and down stairs to try and navigate their way around a um, super morbidly obese little troll sitting on the end. Um... Copper, just copper squat wherever you are. If you get tired, know your limits and just sit down. Find a corner, find a curb, find a stair. Just go. It's a barbershop. Just, I'm sure they won't mind if you go and sit down in one of the stairs, but it's chairs. But she just says, go and sit on some steps. Now, here's my piece of advice plan your trip. Know where you're going. Know your stops. Hire a driver for the day to take you from A to B. If you have AK, you have limitations. Spend the money. Make it enjoyable. Pack an extra pair of bra and undies in your bag. If it's a humid uh, climate, you are going to get sweaty. You are going to get hot. Chuck some new undies in there to make sure you don't get chafe. Chafe is a VK ruiner. It's as bad as sunburn. You know how if you get sunburn on the very first day and then the rest of the holiday is just you just telling people basically stop touching me don't touch me, and then you start to peel and then you look like a necromancer or some sort of zombie apocalypse type person because you are shedding. You are literally shedding in public. Chafe is the same situation. You can't walk. It's uncomfortable. It rubs. And the more you walk, the more you chafe. So get some products that help. Bike shorts, pack them in your bag. Undies, so you've got dry ones, pack them in your bag. These are the kind of tips people might like to hear. Um, as far as bags go, make sure you've got everything you need in there. It prevents you having to walk around aimlessly looking for shops to buy the thing that you need. Band-Aids, clean undies, power banks, all your meds. You should have spare meds in case said bag is stolen. You should be able to get those meds in the country that you are legally because not all countries provide the same medications. You should be able to get alternative medications in that country with a, an approved international script if you can get one pr provided to you before you travel. These are things you'll have to organise, yes, and take time to discuss with your doctor. Um, now, I think she's going to Malaysia. Now, Malaysia is absolutely stunning. They should be going to the beach. They sh there's food. Malaysia is renowned because it's a melting pot of cultures, Malaysia is. It's got people, lots of all the Asians. They're all entangled. We've got Indians, we've got Chinese, we've got the Malaysians. It's, it's a multitude of skin tones over there. Fantastic. So she's definitely going to be going places where there's plenty of food. Um, lots of restaurants, lots of cafes, lots of tourist destinations. It's just, it's it's a beautiful place. So Malaysia's going to be lovely. It's not confirmed she's going. That's just where I think she's going. Um, dress codes, basically, it's a uh, highly Islamic country. So there's temples and scarves and all that good stuff. But basically, Foodie just needs to make sure she's got a good pair of shoes, um, sunscreen and a hat and lots of water and her medications. But in the bag, get one that transforms from a backpack a tote bag into a wheelie bag because when you're somebody who's unfit carrying it in your hand not good because you're not fit enough to really carry anything putting it on your back can be good 
Um, until you probably bought all those really important plastic souvenirs, that tacky shit that you love to take home to the cat. Um, it can, that can make it nice and heavy. Um, and that's not good if you've got a bad back. And hell no, Sala doesn't have the upper body strength to carry anything for you. He's got his own bag to take care of. Um, I would recommend you get one that can turn into a little wheelie bag, like one you could use for as travel luggage on the plane as your hand luggage, but you could also turn it into your backpack to carry around for all the crap that you need to carry as an overweight, obese person traveling around. Um, that could be more convenient for you. And then that way you could take all your leftovers from your all your little trips and stops at your cafes and your little tourist destinations, little restaurants. You'd always pack those up so you could have them later in your hotel room on the days where you don't want to go out or do anything or in case it rains or in case you see another person in the hallway and it freaks you out and you have to go and sit down. All those days when Sala just wants to go on a long, long, long unnecessary walk on his own at night time. Not strange at all. But yeah, make sure you've got a bag that is um, easy to carry, won't rub on you, fits you, has got straps big enough, and you've got it packed so that you can put everything in there. And take lots of water. Foodie's going to need a big bag because she likes lots of water because water can be really expensive wherever you go. Four to five bucks a bottle. And she is, I'm assuming that's what it is in Malaysia because what it is here in Australia. Um, and if she's drinking the amount of water that she's drinking, oh, my God, she might need to find a public place. to Look it up, Safudi. Do they have public refill stations in um, Malaysia for people to refill their reusable water bottles? Because that's going to cost you hella money. That Hell, that would be more than a car a day just keeping you in water. Public transport. Do you have pub do they use pay pass? Do they use cash? Or do you have to apply for a special uh, little card that you can just tap and go? I bet these things are not food, things that foodie have looked into. But public transport is a fantastic way to travel around other countries, especially if you're an obese person. It's cheap, it's free, it's easy access because most countries will have disability access. Um, it'll get you directly to the touristy places and uh, like the shopping centres and hospitals, police stations. You should also know where they are. And foodie should definitely know where the main hospitals are, not just any hospital. The big hospitals are, the ones that could um, take care of her, immense health needs okay not just one that's closest to your hotel you need to go to the one that is going to actually be able to treat you and make sure you have hella 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 travel insurance like the best travel insurance even if it's two or three hundred dollars pay for it especially if you are somebody with lots of health concerns like foodie large heart liver clots the diabetes constant utis um just yeah just, I would definitely have them on speed dial and know my address, know my hotel address, um, the uh, destinations where I'm traveling to, know the addresses in case I do need to call for an ambulance because we don't want to um, risk not getting there in time and having it all misunderstood. Now, in Malaysia, a lot of people speak English. So um, asking for facilities should not be an issue. Know where your toilets are. One of the things I used to be is like, if I'm going somewhere, I know where the toilets are. Always carry cash on you because um, some places the toilets you have to have to put a couple of coins in to open up. I know in America you do. I don't know if you have to do that in Malaysia, but it's always a good idea to have a couple of um, like just the currency, like just some little notes, fives and $10 notes or um, I can't remember the currency in Malaysia, but some coins just in case you need to use a vending machine or if there's a small fee to access a place or go in somewhere. Always just have a little bit of jingle and a little bit of folding in your pocket wherever you are. Even in this day and age where everything is pay pass and going by, it's always good. Especially if you're someone like Fiddy who has to just dash in somewhere and drop trowel um, because, you know, you've eaten the wrong th many wrong things in one day. But um, yeah, so on the days when Foodie's actually out and about in the world and she hasn't just hidden back in her room because it's all too much, my mental health and I'm sticking out my dream holiday in my hotel room. It's going to be Thailand 2.0, I promise you, or it's raining. I don't know. Whatever reason she comes up with to stay in her hotel room. I wonder what colour of the wall will be this time. Do you think it'll be a beige wall, white wall, grey wall, blue wall? Will there be a coloured wall for us? What will be the backdrop for Foodie Beauty's Many Lives Alone sitting in a hotel room? Your guess is as good as mine. But anyway, Foodie put out a really informative travel tip um, video. Informative if you are a fetus and don't know anything about the world and you've never 
thought of planes, trains, or traveling in your whole entire life. But if you are that person, go and watch her video. You'll pick up some really good tips. Um, one other little thing that I would suggest, Foodie. Foodie did say that an aisle seat is probably the best because you can always just stick your leg out into the aisle, which is really handy for the people walking up and down in the dark. Um, if it's a long flight, that's really, really um, thoughtful of you, Foodie. But an aisle seat is good. Um, if, especially if you get your seat close to the toilets. Now, I know you're thinking, oh, my God, close to the toilet cookies. If you're a morbidly obese person and you have a fear of touching and if you have to pass by people, especially if you don't end up getting the aisle seat, that is like one of the most mortifying things. Because you don't want your butt in their face, but you don't want to turn around and have your stomach in their face. And there's no way you're not going to step on the feet. So aisle seats are a good idea because you can get in and out nice and easy. But being near the toilet is really actually kind of good because you're not going to have to stand up, push past people, and then push your way down the aisle. Now, foodie beauty, sideways, she's not too bad. She's still got those, she's still quite wide. But if she is trying to go tummy sideways, no, nah, she's going to knock everybody out. And this was a fear that I used to have that because, you know, I would barely fit down an aisle. I would fit, but it, it, it was, ugh, I have a needle, I'm telling you now. Um, that's embarrassing. So if you're near the toilets, you can get up, you can do your little walk, you can just stand and walk in place, or at least you can stand up so you don't get those blood clots that might lead to your lung, heart or brain and like take you out. You can at least stand up, stretch a little bit, get some blood flow going before you have to sit down again. The best place to do that is if you get a seat near the toilet so you're not having to push past all the people, but you have to put up with all the noise of the people going back and forth all night long. Hey, there's a price to pay for everything, but I suggest getting a seat right at the back. And the other thing is if you are sitting at the back, you don't have to worry about pushing out into people to try and get out of the plane. You just wait to the very end. That way you can get your bag down. You're not holding anybody up. Um, Salah's going to be useless because he can't do much. Um, he might be able to reach stuff, but he's an uncoordinated buffoon. But get your bag down, pop your bag on. You're not rushed, and that way you're less likely to fall, trip, bump into people, get in the way, get hot, get sweaty. Just, just wait and be last off the plane. Easy. Just little tips just to, you know, anxiety reducing, accident reducing tips for pe that are useful. Yeah. Okay. All right, everyone. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I'm really sorry about the break dancing. We do have talents in other areas. Just look at our swimming record. Okay. Bye.